guys, and happy Monday. I know the days don't matter anymore, but it is Monday, which means another emborescent vlog. First of all, how are you guys doing? Hope you're all doing um, as good as can be expected. You know, I'm missing seeing you guys in person. I know I'm missing being at the church. I know you guys probably feel the same way. But in the interest of trying to see each other face to face, next week, I think probably on Monday night, uh, we're going to be having a youth group online thing. Um, where we can all see each other and talk to each other and kind of check in and make sure we're all doing all right. Um, but uh, I'm still kind of working out the kinks on that. So uh, look for details in the remind later this week on that. Uh, and the next thing is you might notice, oh, my studio is different. Yes, I am no longer in my kitchen because... Uh, because uh, poor Catherine was having to stay out of the kitchen the whole time I was recording these. So um, we're in my office now. <gasps> Look. The other thing I can't forget is our new way of starting these meetings. So uh, here's my dad joke of the day. Two goldfish are in a tank. One turns to the other one and says, uh, Hey, uh, you know how to drive this thing? <laughs> That one was really bad. I apologize. Uh, but all that aside, let's go ahead and move into today's topic. Um, and I know I'm going to break some hearts, but unfortunately, we're off of the H theme. I just couldn't think of anything uh, to, to, to name this youth group today with an H. So we are uh, so we're going off the H's, but our theme today is Divine Mercy. Now, that's for a very specific reason. Uh, yesterday, for those of you that watched Mass, which I hope you did at home, yesterday was Divine Mercy Sunday. So I thought maybe it would be a good idea today, because I'm sure some of us don't know what that means, to look at what exactly Divine Mercy Sunday is and what divine, what the idea of Divine Mercy even is in and of itself. I know I've talked about her at, at some youth groups before, but um, the, the, this idea of Divine Mercy first came from St. Faustina Kowalska. She was a young nun in Poland in uh, the 1930s. Now, she was she grew up very poor. She was uneducated. As she went through this process of being a nun, she began to see visions of Jesus speaking to her, telling her important things he wanted her to know. And he specifically asked her to record them. So St. Faustina wrote down all these visions she had with Jesus. And today, all those, um, those writings have been gathered together and it's known as the Diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska. Now, the idea of divine mercy was not originally St. Faustina's. This idea of divine mercy has been around for a very long time in the church. Now, again, you might still be confused. What is divine mercy? We're going to get there. St. Faustina's diary really sparked a lot of interest in, in the idea of divine mercy. And in fact, it sparked off this whole movement following divine mercy. This is what Jesus said to her in one of her visions when he was imparting to her what divine mercy was. He said, I sent prophets wielding thunderbolts to my people. Today I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not wish to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it, pressing it to my merciful heart. I love that quote because I really think it, it embodies this idea of divine mercy in a really succinct way. What Jesus says there, where he says, um, I desire to heal the aching hearts of mankind. Man, doesn't that apply to our world right now? We need healing of our hearts with all this COVID stuff, right? Back to St. Faustina. She died at just 33 from tuberculosis. Now, tuberculosis, for those of you that don't know, is a, is a very nasty disease. You basically uh, can't stop coughing until finally, um, I don't know all the science about it, but basically your lungs shut down. And, um, and you just, that your coughing basically is what leads to your, to your death. So St. Faustina went through all that and yet was still espousing this idea of a merciful God, a kind and caring and loving God. And she received these visions from Jesus telling her that. Now, Divine Mercy Sunday, how did that come to be? So in St. Faustina's visions, Jesus told her this. He said, and she wrote this in her diary. I want the image solemnly blessed on the first Sunday after Easter. And I want it to be venerated publicly so that every soul may know about it. Now, what image is she talking about? I'll get there in a sec. 
Uh, but this is why we have Divine Mercy Sunday. It's because Jesus came to St. Faustina in a vision and said, I want this idea of divine mercy to be venerated the first Sunday after Easter. So every year we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday on the first Sunday after Easter. Now, Pope John Paul II, who was Polish himself, just like St. Faustina growing up in Poland, uh, he had a real love for St. Faustina. And in the year 2000, he officially made the first Sunday after Easter Divine Mercy Sunday. So this has only been a thing for about 20 years, but it was he that made it official. That this was going to be the Sunday where we would celebrate the divine mercy. Okay, now I know you're getting there where you're like, Sean, tell me what the heck divine mercy means. So first of all, when, that, when I just spoke about that image and that quote from Jesus, Jesus appeared to St. Faustina in an image I'm sure many of you have seen. It's an image of Jesus standing, his hand is on his heart, his other hand is out blessing, and there's a red ray and a white ray coming out of his chest. Now, this is what St. Faustina wrote down that Jesus told her. He said, I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. I also promise victory over enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. What a powerful image that it's giving us a victory in, in all the most difficult times, even at the hour of death, especially at the hour of death. Now, all the symbolism, there's tons of symbolism in this image. Um, these two rays, one red, one pale, it basically shows that the red represents the blood of Jesus, which is the life of the souls, and pale for water, which justifies souls. So the blood of our own souls is being purified by the heart of Jesus. It's a symbol of charity, forgiveness, love of God. It's oftentimes referred to as the fountain of mercy. And often if you see this image, it'll be uh, accompanied with a phrase, Jesus, I trust in you, which was a huge phrase that was important for St. Faustina. Now, this image really embodies what divine mercy is. It's the idea that Jesus is constantly reaching out and giving us his heart, giving us his love, and in those darkest moments of where we're, we're worried about death, about destruction, about all the scary things out in the world, that Jesus is there giving us his mercy in those moments. So remember, to be merciful is to be forgiving, to be loving, to be caring. And the idea of the divine mercy is that Jesus is constantly radiating those things out to us. So... This idea of divine mercy is celebrated specifically on, it's celebrated all throughout the year, but specifically on that first Sunday after Easter to remind us that Jesus is there, that Jesus is loving, that Jesus is merciful, that divine mercy exists. Now, in the gospel yesterday, is a very intentional gospel that was picked yesterday to go with Divine Mercy Sunday. It's the very end of the gospel of John, um, it's the second to last chapter, and uh, it's about doubting Thomas, St. Thomas, right? One of Jesus' apostles. Let's talk about this moment for a second and why it was picked to be the gospel on Divine Mercy Sunday. So St. Thomas is called Doubting Thomas for a reason, right? And it says it in the gospel yesterday. St. Thomas, he's not there when Jesus appears to all the disciples. He's not there. So he comes and he goes to the other disciples. And they say, oh my gosh, we saw Jesus. He's risen from the dead. He's back. We all saw him crucified, but he has risen from the dead. Death has been defeated. And St. Thomas says, eh, uh, uh, you guys are full of it. I'm not, um, I'm not believing. So what does Jesus do? He doesn't go to Thomas and say, Thomas, you didn't believe, you're out, right? He doesn't punish him. He appears to Thomas and says, look, you doubted, but I'm here. Thomas says, oh, okay, Jesus, um, you know, I get up. And then Jesus says, no, 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 you said that you needed to touch the wounds in my hands and in my feet and in my side. So come on over, touch them. St. Thomas comes and touches them, has this very intimate moment with Jesus, feels his wounds and believes this story is so important for this idea of divine mercy. Because 
Thomas is a follower of Jesus. He's walked with him through all of his experiences. He's seen him crucified, and he's seen his death. He sees all the amazing things Jesus did, and he still doubts. We do the same thing, don't we? But again, Jesus doesn't punish him. Jesus says, come and feel my mercy, my love, and my forgiveness in doubting that I was alive. It's the same for us. We doubt that we can get out of a difficult situation. I know I do. I do all the time, and I have during this situation, where I've wondered, my gosh, how are we going to get out of this? And when I was researching for this topic yesterday and today, I was thinking about just how important that mercy is to remind me that Jesus is still there. His mercy, his love, and his kindness are still with us. And just like Thomas, when we doubt, when we feel downtrodden and lost, he's there especially in those times. So how do we remind ourselves that this idea of divine mercy, that Jesus exists, he's alive, and that he's filling us with his mercy and love? How do we know that? Well, there's many ways, right? There's focusing on it in Mass yesterday reading the readings, doing all these things that I've been encouraging you guys to do while you're in quarantine. But I wanted to give you guys an, another tool today. Now, there's something St. Faustina started called the Divine Mercy Chaplet. It's basically a rosary. It's a short rosary. So you can pray it in a, you can pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet in about probably less than 10 minutes, I'd say. But it's a really beautiful prayer that focuses on divine mercy. Something that, um, that St. Faustina recommended was that people pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day at 3 p.m. Like I said, this thing doesn't take very much time. So you could do it by yourself or with your family or do it with friends over Zoom or whatever. Um, but it's a great way to focus on the Divine Mercy and on prayer every day. Now, why three? Well, Jesus died at three, right? So St. Faustina said that this is the time that is the most merciful time of the day. Because Jesus' act of dying on the cross was inherently merciful, right? He sacrificed himself to share with us his mercy and love and open up the gates of heaven for us. I'm going to put a link down in the description to, uh, on how to pray it. Uh, you need a rosary. Um, you can probably get by without a rosary and just pray the prayers if you don't have one. This is a great way to connect with this idea of Jesus' mercy, his love, and his care in this time when we need it the most. How can we possibly hope to share Jesus' mercy if we are not being filled with it ourselves? Let's go ahead and close with a prayer together now. And I love that we're praying these prayers together. So, um, so you guys get to see my hair getting even longer. It's pretty nasty. Sorry. Uh, we're going to pray a prayer that uh, Pope John Paul II actually wrote about St. Faustina. I think it's very beautiful. So go ahead and follow along with me at home. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you, Faustina, a gift of God to our time, a gift from the land of Poland to the whole church, obtain for us an awareness for the depth of divine mercy. Help us to have a living experience of it, to bear witness to it among our brothers and sisters. May your message of light and hope spread throughout the world, spurring sinners to conversion, calming rivalries and hatred, and opening individuals and nations to the practice of brotherhood. Today, fixing our gaze with you on the face of the risen Christ, let us make our own your prayer of trusting abandonment and say with firm hope, Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. That was one of St. Faustina's most simple prayers. Jesus, I trust in you. So I encourage you guys to say that to yourself when you're feeling down and you're feeling low. That even if you feel like you can't pull yourself up out of that low during this time, which is okay. You don't always have to. You need to feel some of these things because it's heavy. But try to give some of it over to Jesus. Saying, Jesus, I trust in you and be filled with his divine mercy. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you again. Hope you're all hanging in there. See you next week.